Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, it's already become a hot issue on the trail. And we saw earlier in the program that there's a divide even within the Democratic Party. For that amount of money, you could fund free pre-K for every three and four year old for 10 years. You do a lot more good for poor people, communities of color and the underprivileged by doing pre-K. You could forgive all medical debt, which unlike student debt is not freely entered into. So the Democrats, I'm a progressive, I want to help folks. But I think this is terrible policy. What is my party doing with this? They're, they're, they're disadvantaging, I think they're not helping the people that we're here to help, which is poor people and, and, and underprivileged communities. Yes, Paul, we all believe that you're a warrior for universal pre-K, for child care, for all the things that you know you sat at idly by and allowed Senator Joe Manchin to just destroy in Biden's Build Back Better agenda. You didn't seem to have much of a problem with that. Just you know, business as usual, Senate parliamentarian, super important. Legislative filibuster, super important. I mean, I would want these programs, but what could we do? And now that there is a modest plan in place to forgive a modest amount of student loan debt per federal student loan borrower, you have this man who provides lip service for the corporate elite in this country, basically saying, well, this is this is wrong, it's really gonna hurt the Democratic Party. And of course, he fell back on the same ridiculous talking point about how you know, making people's lives materially better somehow is bad politics. Let's watch. I think this is terrible policy. The politics of it, we saw. Tim Ryan is in a tough race in a tough state, and he can't stand this idea. Senator Warren is all for it. She's not exactly from a swing state in, in Massachusetts. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto from Nevada got a tough race. She doesn't like this. Michael Bennett, the senator from Colorado, he doesn't like this. Democrats, good Democrats. Sharice Davids, one of the more impressive Democrats, the only Democrat in Congress from Kansas, she doesn't like it. So what is my party doing with this? I don't know, Cenk. I mean, if we're talking about Democrats facing a tough race in their congressional seats, maybe they need to rethink their economic policies. Maybe they need to rethink whether it makes sense to, you know, make people's lives materially better because it turns out that's actually a pretty popular idea among the electorate. Yeah, so I love doing this show because we get to tell you guys what actually happens. So uh, that entire CNN segment was a mirage, it was meant to trick you. So uh, every politician that he named is a corporate Democrat that takes massive amounts of money from lobbyists, okay? So he says, and Paul Begala is himself a massive corporate Democrat, okay? So um, now he does not say where he's getting paid, okay? As far as we've seen, we tried to find it, uh, but Paul Begala keeps that, uh, you know, under his vest, and so, uh, and CNN never clarifies who where, who's paying Paul Begala. Okay, so it is very, very, very likely, if you know anything about Washington, he's getting paid by massive business interests to do propaganda on their behalf, and that's why he goes on television. God, you can't help the average American. No, you can't do anything that hurts corporates. No, you can't do that. Bad policy, bad politics. Then he names a whole bunch of other corporate Democrats who take money from campaign contributions from the same exact donors. And then makes it seem as if there's a giant portion of the Democratic Party who are who's united against this bad policy, and it's going to get Democrats to lose their elections. No, it's not. No, they're all kissing corporate ass to try to raise money to win their elections. But is it an unpopular issue? No, you didn't quote any polls. You didn't talk about the voters. You just said those Democrats' names as if that settles the issue. Sharice Davids, one of the biggest corporate Democrats you'll ever seen in your life. Okay, go back to the first clip. He says, I'm a progressive. Are you? Are you? <laughs> Are you? Because you attack the progressive side of the Democratic Party in 100% of your appearances. And then when it's convenient for you to pretend you're a progressive, all of a sudden in the middle of your corporate talking point, you throw out there, I'm a progressive. But every other time you're attacking progressives, you see it's lie layered on top of lie, layered on top of lie. But I got more. He says, "Oh, pre-K, do we could use the money to do pre-K or or uh, retire medical debt?" Well, Paul, have you ever lobbied for that? Have you ever argued for that? If we brought that to a vote now, my guess is you would go right back on CNN and go, "Oh, we can't do pre-K. 
I mean, I'd love to, but inflation. I'm down. I can't touch medical debt. Those people had those debts. They had those debts. You can't do those things. Oh, I, we should have done paid family leave, and he'll make up another thing, etc. It's always the same carousel goes round and round and round of things we shouldn't do to help the average American. And uh, and then he said twice there, and that's why the corporate, uh, you know, folks who hired him sent him out like a dog to go out there and go. What's my party doing? That's why he said it. Twice. What's my party doing? What are, what are they doing? Nah. Democrats are always wrong if they disagree with the corporate position. God bless the Republicans. Paul Begala is supposed to be one of the big fighters in the Democratic Party. Fighter for what? Fighter for what? Fighter for the status quo, fighter for the financial services industry, fighter for Wall Street. I mean, he was working over at Wall Street as a consultant until 2008 uh, during that economic collapse. But let me just jump in and make a point about why it is that we're now on the, I don't know how many days this has been going on, five days? Fifth day of corporatists, both on the left and the right, okay, whining about modest debt forgiveness for student loan borrowers. Modest. Let's be abundantly clear about that, okay? $10,000 for those who took out federal loans but did not need Pell Grants during their education, and may up to $20,000 for those who did need Pell Grants during their higher education. That is to put that up against. The bailouts the US taxpayers have handed over to Wall Street after they destroyed our economy. The amount that we subsidize gas and oil companies, the amount we use to fund the research and development of pharmaceutical drugs, which does that end up really benefiting us in the future when we get price gouged by the same pharmaceutical companies? I mean, when you look at the amount of theft by these corporate, you know, these corporate goons, honestly, who see our tax dollars as their entitlement. I mean, to, to make this student loan forgiveness thing a big deal, like blows my mind. But there is a financial motive behind it as well, Cenk, right? Because there is loan service, there are loan services, servicers who service those federal loans. They make money off of that. They're probably furious that their profit is going to be maybe hurt a tiny bit as a result of this debt forgiveness. And it just, it goes on and on. But I wanna make a point about how I'm not interested, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in hearing anyone who has a career in television, which Paul Begala does as a contributor on CNN. Anyone who is as old as Begala is, he's in his 60s. And this is not an ageism thing. I mention his age because when he went to school, he got his undergrad and his JD at the University of Texas at Austin. Let's talk about how much, you know, how much tuition and fees were when he entered college in the year 1980. In the 1979-1980 academic year, the average annual cost of tuition and fees at public four-year institutions was $738. If you look at the University of Texas around that time, it was close to about $200 per semester, okay? Um, between 1980 and 2020, the average price of tuition, fees, and room and board for an undergraduate degree increased 169%, according to a recent report from the Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce. In fact, he uh, teaches over at Georgetown. Maybe Paul Begala needs to take a little trip over to their uh, Center on Education and the Workforce. Maybe get a little educated on what the reality is for student loan borrowers today. And finally, uh, we should talk a little bit about what the tuition is at the University of Texas at Austin, the same institution he went to. What's the tuition today? The tuition and fees have increased 23.75% for the last 10 years, where the 2022 tuition and fees are $40,996. The undergraduate tuition and fees have raised have been raised from 33,128 in 2012 to 40,996 in 2022. The graduate school tuition and fees have also increased from $20,790 in 2012 to $22,944 in 2022. So I give you all that because whatever cute little story we hear about politicians or political pundits on cable news, whatever cutesy little, I worked hard and I paid my loans on my own. Well, you're dealing with a completely different animal. And tuition not only kept up with inflation, it far surpassed 
inflation in this country. And that is why we're dealing with the problem we're dealing with today. Uh, two more fun things. So uh, the Democrats put out a, a talking point about how this mainly goes to people that are middle class and poor, right? Uh, the debt relief does because the Republicans are all going, it's going to the rich. The Republicans and Paul Begala, every corporate Democrat, every corrupt Democrat is going out there, going, it's going to the rich, it's going to the rich. And PolitiFact said, no, the uh, Democratic talking point is not uh, as accurate as the study uh, pointed out by Republicans. Oh, wow, okay, and it was a Wharton study, okay? so. Um, and it turns out the Wharton study shows that 75% of the debt relief is going to people making under $82,400. It's means tested, it's Oops. means tested. Why is everyone, did everyone forget? Did everyone forget that it's a means tested program? That if you're yeah. making six figures, $125,000 a year, you don't qualify for any forgiveness. Do yeah. you not realize that? Like why, why is everyone pretending like we're stupid and we don't know about that portion of this deal? Yeah, and that's because everyone, and that leads into my second point, Anna. Everyone in charge hates this and it, because it yep. helps the average American and it helps people making under $82,000 a year. None of them make under $82,000 a year. They all make in the millions. So they're like, they view this as their taxpayer money of the rich, the beloved rich. Going to someone who's middle class, building a ladder up to the upper class. They don't want that. So they, so lo and behold, the right wing media and corporate media agree. Now, this is a point that Anna makes all the time. When it's culture war issues, they all disagree and they fight like crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, transgender and racial and this and that, right? But when it's an economic issue, all of a sudden Tucker Carlson agrees with Anderson Cooper, who agrees with Joy Reid. And they all hate it, they yes. all hate it if you start giving to the average American. So what does CNN do? They rush out Paul Begala and say, I'm a progressive, but I don't know what my party's doing. Helping the average men, <laughs> we should be helping corporate interests, right Tucker Carlson? Over to you at Fox News, Fox News, what are they doing? I can't believe this. Hey, look at that, it turns out all of cable news agrees completely. They hate you and they want all the money to go to the rich. That's because they are the rich. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.